Now, if you were to just walk up to people on the street and say, hey, name a math theorem, uh, you'd probably get some funny looks. People would be crossing the street to avoid you. But the few who would answer you would probably say the Pythagorean theorem. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're not just going to talk about what it is, but more important and way cooler is why it's true. And we're going to start with an example. I've got four identical right triangles here. Each one has legs of length three and four. And I've arranged them to form both a large square and a small square. Now, the first thing we should wonder is, are these really squares? Now, for the big one here, clearly each of the angles is a right angle, and each of the sides has a short leg and a long leg. Each of the sides is 7. So each of the sides is 7. All the sides are the same. All the angles are right angles. That's a square. But what about the little one in here? Each of the sides is a hypotenuse, so all the sides are the same length. But why are these right angles? Well, if we look at the acute angles of a right triangle, they add up to 90 degrees. These two add up to 90 degrees. These, this triangle is identical to this triangle, so this angle is the same as this one. So because these two add up to 90 degrees, these two down here have to add up to 90 degrees as well. But all three of these angles down here at this point have to add up to 180 degrees because this is a straight line. These two add up to 90. All three add up to 180. That one in the middle has to be 90 degrees. Same thing at each of the other corners. So all these angles are right angles. All the sides are the same. That little thing in there is a square too. So your eyes aren't fooling you, and I'm not fooling you either. Now we're going to solve the problem by finding the area of the large square. And that's going to help us find this side length right there. And we can find the area of the square in two ways. The easy way, of course, is side length is 7 the area is 7 squared, which is 49. So we've got the area of the large square is 49. But we can also find the area of the large square by adding up the areas of all these pieces. First we have the four little right triangles. Each of these right triangles have legs of length 3 and 4, so the areas of each of these is 4 times 3 divided by 2. Product of legs divided by 2. Then we also have this square in the middle that we're going to call the side length of the square, which is the hypotenuse we want, we're going to call that c. So the area of that square there is just c squared. Now of course if we add up all the pieces, we have to get the whole, so these two are equal. So multiply this out, 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6, times 4, we get 24 plus c squared equals 49. Subtract the 24, we get c squared is 25. So c is just 5. Of course, we can't have negative 5. That doesn't make any sense for a length. Now, I want you to look closely at something else here. This c squared is 25. Let's take a look at these legs. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. The sum of the squares of these leg lengths equals the square of the hypotenuse. That's interesting. Might just be a coincidence. Of course, you may already know that's the Pythagorean theorem. We've just shown it in one specific case. Now we're going to show it for all right triangles. We're going to work through a proof. We're going to use this as our model. This is the way I like to find proofs, is I'll work through one specific example with numbers, then I'll replace all the numbers with variables and work through that. And that'll give me my proof. So here are my four right triangles. They're identical. Instead of having numbers, I'm going to use variables now for the sides. And again, all of these, these little right triangles are identical. They have legs of length A and B, and their hypotenuse is C and they're arranged to form two squares, just like we did before. And we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to find the area of the large square, and we're going to do that in two different ways. Now we can add up the pieces, just like we did last time, and the pieces, we've got the four right triangles, and each of those right triangles has area A times B over 2, product of the legs divided by 2, and then we add in the little square, which is just C squared. And that, adding up all those little pieces, has to equal the whole thing, which is just 
the square of a plus b. Because the whole thing is a square of side length a plus b. Uh, now we have to deal with that. We're going to use the distributive property to multiply that out. We'll do that up here. We have a plus b squared. That's just a plus b times itself. which is a times a plus b plus b times a plus b. And all we're doing here is the distributive property. I take this a times a plus b, this b times a plus b. And then I apply the distributive property a couple more times. I get a squared plus ab plus a times b is still ab plus b squared. And I can combine these two. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So, I can write that in for this. I can also simplify here. 4 times ab over 2. 4 cancels with the 2. Leaves 2. I have 2ab plus c squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And we get some nice cancellation here. We subtract 2ab from both sides. And we have the Pythagorean theorem. There it is. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. And we've just proved it. You don't buy it. You want to see another proof? All right, all right, all right. We'll do another one. I'll take my right triangles and I'll arrange them a little bit differently this time. I'm going to arrange them like this. And once again, we form two squares because, you know, the sum of the acute angles of a right triangle is 90 degrees. This plus this is 90. That means this plus this is 90. We arrange our four identical right triangles like this. We'll get right angles in each of these corners. Each of these is a hypotenuse. The sides are the same. The angles are all 90. This big thing is a square here. Same thing for the little square. All the angles are 90. All the sides are the same length. Now let's see how this proves the Pythagorean theorem. Now up here we'll call that short length is A. And we'll call the whole thing b. So the side length of the little square, the side length of the little square now is b minus a. And the side length of the large square, that one's pretty easy. That's just c. It's the hypotenuse of each of these triangles. And once again, we're going to find the area in two different ways. The area of the large square, of course, is just c squared. That one's pretty easy. The Pieces, once again, we've got four little right triangles. We know how to find the area of those. This is 4 times AB over 2. Each of these has, the area of each of these is the product of the legs, A times B divided by 2. And then we have to add the area of the little square. And that's just the square of B minus A. And once again, we have to break out our distributive property to multiply that out b minus a squared is just b minus a times b minus a. Take the b, multiply it by b minus a, minus the a times b minus a. And this is basically the same thing as what we did before. b times b is b squared. b times minus a gives us minus a times b. Minus a times b is minus a a times b minus a times minus a that gives us a plus a squared. I can combine these two and call that minus a b minus a b is minus 2 a b and there I have my expansion. So here once again I can simplify this 4 times a b over 2 that's just 2 a b and then I just write this down down here and once again, we have a little convenient cancellation. 2AB minus 2AB, that cancels out and leaves 0. And I like alphabetical order. I'm going to switch the order of these and just write it as A squared plus B squared. And once again, the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. Now are you convinced? Uh, you want to see more proofs. We'll get to that in just a minute. You see, it's quite a sport among math lovers to find more and more proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. 
even an American president has a published proof of the Pythagorean theorem. And no, it's not one of the recent presidents, it's James Garfield. You gotta go way back to find a president who can prove the Pythagorean theorem. Now, you wanna see my favorite? You wanna see my favorite? All right, here it is. You might wanna break out the pause button and look at this a little bit longer so you can figure out what's going on here.